What's going on everybody? How you doing? Welcome back to another Epi Quack Tuts. Today I've got a really nice sustain style bass for you guys. Real gritty, real heavy, real nasty. We get a lot of requests for this type of sound. So uh, I made a couple of them and today the one I'm going to be showing you is going to sound like this. Uh, there's some cool things going on here. Uh, this macro here will really mess up the sound in a good way. A lot of different tones you can get with this sound. It's really distorted, just a really insane sound. Um, but before I show you how I made that, I'll go over it step by step. If you guys can just do me a quick favor, you know you want to, just hit that subscribe button. You will not regret it. I've got some wild sounds coming up. I've got some cool rhythm basses, another really wild uh, sustain bass that's gonna sound like this. I mean, that thing is just awesome. Uh, I've got a couple rhythm basses for you guys. For example, I've got this one right here. Real funky, I got this rhythm bass. And we've got a really cool dark dubstep sound. It's not really a bass, but it's a really cool like atmospheric sound. There's some cool things going on with the reverb in that one that's making it sound like there's wind and just giving it, like I said, a lot of atmosphere. But like I said, hit that subscribe button so you can learn how to make those sounds and more. Let's jump into this cool sustain style bass. Uh, if I can find out where the hell it was, I don't. Right here. All right, so this is it right here. There's some cool things going going on here. So with these basses, the in, the sustain basses in particular, the phase position is gonna make a big difference. So if you can hear when I play this note each time, it's gonna sound the exact same. Now, if I bring this random phase knob back up, back up to the middle where it usually is, or I think it's usually all the way up. Every time I play it, you're getting a little different tone. For this sound, this is something I usually forget to do, but turn the random phase all the way down for both of these so you always get one constant sound, one constant tone. So the phase position is gonna start at the exact same spot each time, giving you a much cleaner, consistent sound. Now what's cool about that is since now the random's all the way down, it gives us much more control if we wanna change the phase ourselves, which I did um, with Macro 4. So Macro 4 is routed to the phase position of both of these. So pretty much, I just kind of found a few different positions on this on the phase knob um, until I found a tone that sounded really sick because one thing that's cool about the sound is right now, you have the real high pitch, you know, screechy sustained bass, but if you bring the octave down one, you get more of that mid-range. But it's kind of boring, I don't know, it just sounds kind of stale. So I just messed with this phase until I found something that worked. So with the macro all the way up, it went from this, a boring, thin, sustained bass to a more tonal, detuned, just kind of screechy siren sustained bass. and I just thought that sounded a lot better. So that's just one really cool thing that I that I never really do, <laughs> that I tried different on this one, and it just sounded awesome. So now that I've got that out of the way, let's start building this thing step by step. So I do have a lot of distortion on and OTT. I just turned them off, initialized the preset. Now let's start from scratch. So when I'm thinking about making this bass, I want that really grainy, distorted, I don't know, needly kind of sound. And a good way to get that is FM from B, especially when you have it on like below 50%. That area right around like from 40 to 50%, you can see right here around 41% is where you can get those really grainy kind of really cool sounds. So that's pretty much where I started and then I just took it from there. So like I said, oscillator A, we're gonna do an FM from B. So we're gonna use basic shapes and the square wave just sounded best for this. So go ahead, bring the level all the way up. Uh, random, very important, bring that all the way down. Phase is gonna be right at 180. So then FM from B, go ahead, turn that on, how you doing? And then for now, we'll just leave it as is. So now let's bring in oscillator B. So basic shapes again. So I just filtered through some of these wavetables until I found one that sounded best, closest to the sound that I was trying to uh, recreate. And for this one, it was the, uh, the saw wave. So go to your saw wave and then bring the octave up to. Level all the way down random phase all the way down. Then for a warp type, we're gonna do sync window, uh, window full, and then you're gonna bring that up to 5.33. All right, so now that you got that, that's what's gonna give us that real screechy, like high-end sound right there. So 5.33 on the sync. Now let's bring up this FM from B. So 
So right around this 40 to 50% area is what sounded the best. So I had 41% and that's where we're starting at. And now you can hear what that sync is doing too. So like I said, I had it at 5.33, 5.34, ain't gonna make too big of a difference. All right, very good. So let's see what we got here. Let's go to our combs filter next. Miscellaneous combs. So in, in the original sound, if I turn the combs filter off. It introduces some more tones in there that just kind of sounds cool too. It just contributes to the overall organized mess that is this sound. So let's go ahead and do that. So our cutoff is going to be 1479. Right about there, 1475. Going to bring that resonance up quite a bit, about 48%. Boost the drive slightly to about like 930. 23%. And then back off the mix. So, you know, we're just getting some of that tone from the combs filter. We're not, we're not getting the whole thing. We want the original sound to kind of shine through with just a little bit of that combs filter on there. So, uh, our mix is going to be exactly 33%. Alright, let's see. FX, very important here. Shitload of distortion on the sound. So, distortion. Hard clipper just sounded the best for this one. Um, it's all the way up. So, then the EQ, there's a couple things going on. There's a small notch that's being modulated a little bit just to give it some movement you can see that right here on the right and then i boosted one frequency range to bring out a few frequencies obviously but it just brought out a certain tone that sounded really kind of i don't know neurotic in a way so i boosted so first go on to your uh to the peak right here on the right uh frequency is going to be 1115 so now when i boost when i boost that I wanted, that's the exact like tone I wanted. So it adds a whole nother pitch in there. And just creates in that whole nice siren sustain style. That sounds really sick. So boost that frequency right there. Uh, back off the cue a bit, back off the resonance to widen that peak. So it sounds a little bit more natural. So without it, with it, I just thought that sounded cool. All right, uh, and then we have our notch, which is being modulated. So bring the gain down about like 10 o'clock right here, about like 7 dB, and then it's gonna be modulated. That nice neuro sound. So bring the frequency right in the middle, about 638. And then we're gonna modulate it. So um, it doesn't matter which LFO, um, just make it look like this. Just bring the triangle down to about halfway. Uh, trigger so it starts at the beginning each time turn on triplet and dot a note and the rate that I chose is one eighth dot a note right there So bring that to your frequency you want it to actually uh, be bipolar this modulation So so option shift or alt shift if you're on a PC click on that and then it'll make a make the modulation go bipolar So it's just gonna be going left to right up and down whatever so frequency is gonna be at negative 18 So the frequency modulation from alpha 1 negative 18 there you go, it's got a little bit of movement, just sounds right. So now, of course, we have to do OTT, so turn on your compressor, multiband, boost that bitch. Bring down the master. And one more thing with oscillator B, I almost forgot halfway through this tutorial. Uh, I was wondering why it sounded so thin. Uh, I have the level all the way up, actually, so usually with FM from B, you have the level all the way down. But in sound design, there's no rules, do whatever the hell you want, if it sounds cool. Then, then it's then it's right. So bring the level all the way up. Gives us some nice, nice grit. All right, now it sounds better. All right, let's move on. We have our chorus. The chorus is off right now. Um, I have that controlled through a macro. Um, so basically, the rate's all the way down. Delay one's right in the middle. Um, then bring the low pass uh, filter all the way up. So all those frequencies are coming through. Boost the resonance a lot. Uh, boost it to about like two o'clock. Gives us that classic, you know, chorusy metallic sound. But I wanted more of a tonal effect from this. So the depth is gonna, so the depth is gonna be more on the left. So it's gonna be at three milliseconds. 
and then back off the mix all the way route a macro to the mix so you can turn it off and on all right so I have one more modulation going on here and that's envelope 2 so envelope 2 um, it's just to give it some more kick in the beginning some, some more attack. And it also changes the tone a bit too. So envelope two, attack is just four milliseconds or 0.4 milliseconds. Decay is gonna be 327. Well, it doesn't really matter because the sustain's all the way up really, so. And then the sustain at 100%. So then bring that to your sync right here, oscillator B to the warp type and bring it up five. And then I mean, you can bring it up to whatever the hell you want really. But the way I have it was at five. There we go. And then bring it also to your combs filter, bring it to the cutoff and bring it up 15. And you can even have that built in. Whatever you want to do. So that's a pretty important part. So let's jump into our macros here. So macro one was controlling the sync. So, so this macro just kind of pretty much raised the pitch. Bringing the, bringing the harmonics and all that. <laughs> Make it sound nice. Uh, so bring that modulation up 17. All right, macro two, that was on our combs filter. That's gonna what's that's what's gonna destroy the sound in a good way. So bring that to the cutoff of the combs filter and bring it down 81. All right. And then macro three, this is what was cool. So macro three is what's going to be modulating the, is, is what's going to be changing the phase position of both of these. So it'll sound cooler if you bring the octave down. Right now it sounds like that. So once we bring this macro here, check it out. So bring it to the phase of both of these. And then you want to make sure this one's going unipolar, just going to the left here. So bring it down minus 27 for this one. All right. And then you're gonna bring it to the same place on oscillator B, but you're gonna bring it up 24. Now, these weren't numbers that I knew going in. I just messed around here and these particular numbers sounded best. I just thought it sounded cool like that. Gives it more of a tonal, screechy vibe. This sounds awesome. All right, so now let's fatten it up. Um, I have, this is Apple's version, uh, or Logic's version of Camel Fat. So if you have Logic, this is the settings. I have two different distortion types, diode and grit. The grit just brings out the grit, obviously. It makes it gritty. <laughs> grit and diode, so I mean, whatever saturation you have, you can use, just, you know, mess with it until it sounds like this. Make it sound nice and gritty, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, OTT. That's really it, guys. So that's how you make a really sick, gritty uh, sustain bass and serum. One of many ways you can do it. Uh, if you like this sound, hit the subscribe button. I showed you in the beginning what I've got coming up, some wild sounds. But anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one.